Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to show you how to remove a custom Linux kernel if you're using a Ubuntu based distribution. Now if you're not familiar with custom Linux kernels, they're effectively Linux kernels that have been specifically tweaked for a better responsiveness when your system's under load. Uh, they often feature reduced system latency and use different CPU schedulers. They'll also include patches sometimes that are not found in mainstream kernels, for example F-Sync which is a technology that further reduces the wine overhead when you're playing video games. So two of the more, more popular custom Linux kernels available are Liquorix and Xanmod. However, since they are custom Linux kernels, there's every chance that they may not work with your particular setup. And worst case scenario, they can actually make your system less stable and ultimately prevent you from booting your system. So in that particular case, probably advised to remove them and revert to the kernel that originally came with your distribution. However, before you do this, do make sure that you're not currently booted into the kernel you wish to remove. Now, if you ever want to check what kernel you're currently running, you can do it with a simple terminal command. And that command is uname, space, dash, and lowercase r. So as you can see, in my particular case, I'm running the 5.9 version of the Xan mod. Now, also, if you want a really easy way of switching between kernels that are installed in your system, and especially if you're using a system that uses Grub, then you can install a little program called Grub Customizer. And this is available through your distribution software store, or alternatively, if you want to install it through the terminal, you can do that as well. So for example, you'd use the following command, which is sudo apt install, and then grub-customizer. Note the Z. Once you've installed that, launch the application. So as you can see, by default, it will list your Grub reference, but if you've only got one operating system on your system, the actual Grub menu itself will be hidden. However, it's possible to force it to appear. So the way you do that is you go to General Settings, Advanced Settings, and where it says Grub Timeout Style, make sure that is changed to one. You also might as well set the Grub Timeout to a sensible value. That's basically how long it takes before it boots into the highlighted option. So we'll put 10 seconds. Click close, click save, and now what will happen is next time you boot onto your system, you'll be greeted by the Grub menu. So from here you can choose what version of Ubuntu you want to boot into. So we want to choose the one that's the non Zan mod, so we'll choose the generic one here. Alternatively, if you're using Pop OS, you can bring up the System D boot menu by holding down the space key. And either way from there, choose the kernel that you wish to boot into. So when it comes to removing the custom kernel, there's a couple of different methods for doing this, but I found that the most consistent method is to use the Synaptic Package Manager, which is a GUI front end for the terminal. As always, this can probably be installed by your distribution software store. Alternatively, you can install it using the following terminal command, sudo apt install synaptic. Either way, once the application is installed, launch it and then search for the name of the custom kernel. So in my case, I'm looking for Xanmod. If you filter by installed version, it will make it a bit easier for you to find. So in my particular case, there's actually three references. So if you want to highlight all of those, right click, go Mac for removal, and then apply at the top. This will just confirm what's going to be removed. Then click apply. Okay, so as a bonus, what you can do as well is remove the custom kernels repository. And the way you do that is you go to settings, repositories, you go to other software, and as you can see there, Xanmod. So if you now click remove, click close, and then reload the repositories. And that's it. With that, you've successfully removed a custom Linux kernel from your system. And it also brings this video to an end. As always, thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.